congratulations, CPS Elias, on your 60th anniversary. My most memorable moment was when I delivered my thesis results in a lecture. It was memorable because at that moment, I was everything I ever was in UP. And in UP, I was first a learner, second, an educator, and third, a discoverer. So to everyone involved in the UPS Elias community, I hope you always bring with you the 60-year heritage of UPS Elias, wherever you are, whatever you may be, whether you're a learner, an educator, a discoverer, or all of that rolled into one. Hello everyone. Welcome to the December edition of the UPSLIS lecture series. This is part of the hashtag Webinar Wednesday offerings of the UP School of Library and Information Studies as we count down to our 60th anniversary next year. Today's lecture is called Kain Tayo, Exploring Filipino Culture and Food Representations in Local Children's Picture Books. We welcome students and teachers of library and information science and information professionals in the Philippines and across the globe. I am Ina Therese Santos, a faculty member from UPSLIS, your host and moderator for this webinar. Before we proceed, please take note that our webinar is in high definition. For a more pleasurable viewing experience, please check and adjust the settings of this live stream to HD. You may also take the opportunity to check the audio and adjust the volume to a comfortable listening level. This webinar can be seen live on both our YouTube channel and on our Facebook page, UPSLIS. So in the event that you encounter any issues on watching us live on Facebook, you may also watch this webinar at YouTube via the UPSLIS channel. We're now on our sixth month of our Webinar Wednesday series. These, along with our online talk shows for the record, Faculty Room, and the Digital Scholarship Series are part of our journey on the road to 60. Looking forward to the 60th anniversary of UPSLIS in July 2021. Our topic this afternoon is really very interesting. I'm sure a lot of our viewers are excited with the prospect of attending a lecture about food. Couple that with yet another interesting topic, which is children's literature. Surely we are in for an engaging discussion. Definitely this webinar will be another fruitful learning experience for us all. But before our talk, allow me to explain the mechanics of this webinar. In case you miss portions of this webinar, you may view this as a Facebook video or check our YouTube channel at UPSLIS. If you have any questions during the lecture, you may post your question by going to www.menti.com and typing in the code 84118811. All questions will be tackled in a question and answer portion after the speaker has presented. Please take note that we will not be entertaining questions posted in the comment section of this video. Again, you may post your question by going to menti.com and typing in the code 84118811. The website and code will be shown on screen throughout the lecture. At menti.com, you may view the questions posted by our other viewers. If a question you wish to ask has already been posted, please upvote the question by clicking its thumbs up icon so we can prioritize and address it first. We will be issuing certificates of participation to those who will be joining us in the live event. We ask that you finish the webinar and watch out for the announcement containing the link to where you can register for your certificate. As part of the requirements for the certificate, you need to answer a question correctly. We advise that you listen intently to the speaker as she delivers the lecture. 
you can rewatch the video and try again if you answer incorrectly. For registered professionals, this webinar may be applied for continuing professional development or CPD as a self-directed learning activity. Again, please stay with us until the end of the webinar for instructions on how to get your certificate. For those who have just tuned in, tuned in, this is Kain Tayo, Exploring Filipino Culture and Food Representations in Local Children's Picture Books, a webinar organized by the UP School of Library and Information Studies. We are fortunate to have as our speaker this afternoon, a distinguished member of the profession who is also one of our faculty members in UPSLIS. Our speaker graduated with honors, a cum laude at UPSLIS in 2005. Subsequently, she garnered the top spot during the 13th Librarian Licensure Examination of the same year. Born in Valenzuela City, she serves Valenzuelanos as the Chief Librarian of the Pamantasan ng Lunsod ng Valenzuela and is currently the librarian in charge of the Valenzuela City Library. She is also a lecturer in UPSLIS teaching children's literature and young adult literature courses. At present, she is taking her PhD in reading education at the UP College of Education. Place top two in the three-year Nefli Leadership Program of the National Library of the Philippines and was also awarded as a most promising innovator. Moreover, she was awarded with the Best Research Award by the PAARL for the paper When Visitors Turn into Volunteers, Exploring the Connection of User Experience and Volunteerism in a Local University. Other than her academic endeavors, she writes at Juan Valenzuela, a personal blog which serves as her tribute to her hometown, of which her efforts were recognized by the Valenzuela Local Government Unit on the 150th birth anniversary of their local hero. Awarding her the 2019 Gawa Dr. Pio Valenzuela para sa social media, the highest distinction given to a Valenzuela resident by the city government. She loves cooking and trying out new food with her daughter. She is a mobile photography enthusiast and an early morning runner. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome Ms. Rochelle S. Silverio. Now on with the lecture. Happy learning to us all. Good afternoon po sa inyong lahat. Rochelle Silverio po ng pamantasan ng Lusod ng Valenzuela Library. At nabanggit nga po, in charge sa Valenzuela City Library, nagtuturo rin po ng LIS 114 at LIS 115 sa UP SLIS. It is a pleasure for me to be here with you this Wednesday afternoon. Kasi I'll be talking about things that I'm really passionate about. Kung makikita nyo po sa ating unang slide, mga pagkain po, turon, siopaw, adobo, kanin, Pahingi pa nga po ng extra rice. Diba? Nakakagutom po, ano? I really hope that you are busog-busog right now because we will be discussing two things that I am passionate about. Food, being a blogger, and children's books. Yes, it is indeed feasible for you to write and talk about things that you are interested in despite their hmm, apparent differences. May connection din sila. And that's what I was able to do in a congress then in Bangkok, Thailand. The theme was Read Equals Life, Reading in the Digital Age. Super saya nung congress na yon. Unforgettable. It's the third Asia Oceania Regional IBBY Congress. IBBY is the International Board on Books for Young People. A gathering for children's book lovers, educators, specialists, librarians, authors, illustrators, publishers, and more. Ito naman po, makikita niya yung presentation ko naman. Here I was presenting then. It was really a great experience being a Philippine delegate in an international congress. I brought in books, children's books, and shared it with the audience. Tapos, talagang yung feeling nakaka-proud siya to be among the three Pinoys who were there presenting uh, their papers representing the country. The session that I was in was uh, diversity and multiculturalism. Ayan, so nakikita niya po na 
nagkakaroon po ng interaction with the audience. At ngayon pong after na ito, I'll be sharing it with you. Sobrang nakakagutom ng topic natin ngayong merienda time. And the title is, yan, basahin po natin, Exploring Filipino Culture and Food Representations in Selected Philippine Children's Picture Books. Yan, kakain po tayo ngayon. Food and eating are fundamental to us Filipinos. It can be observed in the common greetings of Kumain ka na ba? And a very humbling invitation to the table. Tara, tara. Kain po tayo. To the preparation and consumption of portions of great, tasteful, delightful food during feasts and celebrations. Just like now, that we are a few days from the holidays. Papasko na po tayo at Panu Year. Definitely, bubuhos po ang pagkain. Now, Lifting a quote from a book dear to me, Yvette Tan mentions the following in Feasts and Famine, how Pinoy writers savor them in Philippine literature. We're very, very grumpy when we're hungry. On the opposite side, we're at our very, very best when we're well-fed. At the same time, food is tied to being Filipino. We think with our stomachs and we love with our guts. And we often forget it, but how we relate to food is indicative of how we relate to life in general. So, talagang malaking... Uh, malaki ang ginagampanan ng pagkain sa ating pang-araw-araw na buhay. So, those being said, Philippine cuisine is then a reflection. It mirrors the people's cultural identity and history. And of course, it's an expression of cultural passion and pride. Thus, indeed, food punctuates the Filipinos' lives. Agay po tayo dyan. Recognizing this overwhelming importance of food among Filipinos, coupled with the realization that food is so integral to humans in general that it can also be observed in the innumerable creations that man has made, which unquestionably includes literature for children, mga literaturang pambata, I then explored the status of food in Philippine children's picture books which have accessible information in print and digital formats. Thus, this research that I did basically intends to know how food is introduced to Filipino children in picture books by answering two questions. May dalawang tanong po na gustong sagutin yung research na ito. One is how is food used in local children's stories? And two, how does it help promote Filipino culture to children? Now, to answer these questions, these queries, we first turn to the body of previously written studies and articles on food as part of culture, as well as writings on food representations. So, sumili po muna tayo sa mga naunang mga literatura. Now, to cite, food has this integral role as a cultural signifier, not only the invention of a culture, but one that gives contour to the mentalities that structure thought and expression. In the Philippines, food writer uh, Doreen Fernandez, I believe uh, you've heard about her, affirmed this and suggested that eating is ingesting culture. She describes food as a key to the whole cultural package and is an accessible point of entry to Philippine culture and history other than being a topic of nutritional and domestic concern. Now, food has many meanings. Food can be seen as a symbol of God's grace, love, kayamanan o kahirapan, you have security and power. Yan po ay ilan lang sa mga simbolism na makikita natin sa literature. Mababasa po natin sa iba't ibang literatura. Now, connecting food naman po and children's literature, we can take a look at some of these resources for cats. Uh, this perspective of children's literature yields a sort of sociology of childhood, an examination of what's eaten by whom, when and where gives a 
a portrait of children's manners, problems, and preoccupations. So, mas naiintindihan po natin ang mga bata, children, uh, their interests, their needs, their developmental stages when we take a look at this. As well as in critical approaches to food in children's literature, it mentions that food is as prevalent and significant in children's literature as it is in literature for any other audience. So, so nabanggit pong yun, masasabi natin na ang children's literature ay hitik din sa usaping pagkain at simbolismo. Paano ko pinrepair yung table? Okay, so to come up with a list of picture books to be analyzed, the internet and Philippine library databases were searched for works using key terms po and phrases such as children's books, children's literature, and food. Recommendations po from teachers and school librarians on the topic were also gathered. Exclusion, uh, yung po mga wordless books are excluded in the study since readers may arrive at varying interpretations and words used to describe the illustrations in each page. As well as yun po mga stories na merong uh, animation ng pagkain at binibigyan siya ng buhay. Ay, inalis ko po muna because I see this uh, because I see this warranting yet another line of extensive research which I am pretty, pretty interested in. So, pwedeng part to siya. So, a total of 12 books were gathered for inclusion in this particular study. So, ano yung labing dalawang libro na yon? So, let's take a look at what's on the table. So, the 12 books that are included in this discussion ay ang Hating Kapatid. Hating Kapatid ni Raisa Rivera Falgi and Fran Alvarez. Yan po ng Adarna House. Here, an aunt learns about the true meaning of sharing with siblings. Sumunod naman po ang Tiktok Talk at Tiktok Boom ni Rene Villanueva at ni Renato Gamos. It's a story about two puppy brothers who are always fighting. And then you have Halo Halo Especial ni Yvette Fernandez at ni Jill Arwen Posadas. It tells about a sick girl who remembers her grandmother and the magic that she weaves in the kitchen. And then the fourth one is Gusto Ko Nang Pansit Ngayon ni Rene Ovilanueva at ni Joseph Foy David. It tells about a young picky eater who starts to practice healthy eating habits. Next, we have Taho, 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 Tahoe ni Renato C. Vibiesca at ni Ray Ann Bernardo. It tells the story of a uh, Taho vendor's daughter and how she helped her family make a living. Sumunod naman ay yung Kain, Kumain, Kinain, a food chain story ni Mike L. Bigornia at ni Jess Avrera. It tells about a young boy who goes fishing. Then we have Filimon Mamon. Filimon Mamon ni Christine Belen at ni Jason Moss. Ito rin po ay sa Adarna House. It tells about a young overweight boy who begins to practice healthy eating. And next we have Cora Cooks Pansip. It tells about a little girl who does the grown-up job of cooking in the kitchen with her mother. Ito po ay sinulat naman ni Dorina Lasso Gilmore at uh, illustrated by Christy Valiant. Now, the last four, the last four we have here, Araw sa Palengke, or A Day in a Market by May Tobias Papa and Isabel Rojas. Tells about a young girl who joins her mother to the market. Okay, ito rin po ay galing sa Adarn House. Next, we have Maya's Birthday Party ni Yvette Hernandez at ni Nicole Ann Yim. Tells the story of a young girl and the love of her adopted parents. So, ito ay isang birthday party. Next po is Tight Times, one of my favorite children's books of all time. Ito po ay sinulat ni Jeanette C. Patindol at iginuhit naman po ni Sergio T. Bumatay III. Wala po sa Adarn House. It tells about a family of rats who stays happy together during a financially difficult time. Nanalo po ito, by the way, ng 
TBBY Salanga Price at TBBY Alcala Price noong 2007. At yung panghuli po natin ay ang inuwi ni Nanay ni Ramon si Sunico. Okay, ito po ay isang counting book which uses the recipe and procedure of cooking sinigang na bangus. Yan, so pagbibilang naman po siya. Now, the texts of the picture books were initially examined by taking note of salient information such as their titles, authors, illustrators, publishers, and the year that they were published. Uh, first reading was done to take note of the characters, plot, setting, themes, and values. Another reading was made to take note of the various food references mentioned in the text and the situations that they were used for. Some details from the illustrations are also taken into account. Also, deep content analysis. So, uh, so, to have a deeper understanding of the children's books. To gain a holistic, okay, a holistic approach of the uses of food in the picture books, the study also delved into the various elements of literature in relation with food as the subject of focus. So, what are the food mentioned in the stories? Ayan po, tingnan po natin kung ano yung mga nabanggit. Sa ating kapatid, nabanggit po ang bibingka, fried bananas o banana cube, buko pie, cake, rice cakes o puto, candy, sandwich, mamon, at sapin-sapin, sa tic-tac-tok at pick-pack boom. Nabanggit po ang milk o gatas, vegetables, eggs, soft drinks, chocolate, at candy. Sa halo-halo espesyal, uh, nandun naman ang bibingka, champurado with salted fish, and saimada, turon at halo-halo. Sa gusto ko ng pansit ngayon, ito naman po, greens and fruits, fish and rice, fresh fruit juice, noodles, sausages o longganisa, dumplings o siopaw. At naman po sa, at makikita naman po natin sa taho, 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 taho native snacks and dainties. Fish ball, taho, balut, at buko. Then, we have in Kain, Kumain, Kinain, a food chain story, roasted mudfish naman. So, observably, from the raw and fresh foods to the cooked ones, these are all easily found locally in the Philippines. Examining deeper, the food references can be said to be either very Filipino, ayan, meron din pong influensya ng ibang bansa at Of course, meron din pong mga generic food items. Ayan, makikita po natin sa unang anim na mga libro. Ito naman po yung sumunod na kalahate sa Filimon Mamon. Nabanggit po ang adobo, lechong paksil, green mangoes and bagoong, nangangasim ako. Desserts in heavy syrup, fish, vegetables, popcorn, peanuts, corny, chicharon, liter of soft drink. Uh, fruits. You have Cora Cooks Pancit, Adobo Chicken, Lumpia with Sauce, Pancit, a uh, bowl of pineapple slices, have smashed bananas, and sweet rice wrapped in banana leaves. Sa Aron sa Palenque, you have Watermelon Lanzones and Rice Cake. In Maya's birthday party, we have the chocolate cake, ubi ice cream, sarap, spaghetti, and milk. In tight times, ito naman po, eggs, chocolate drink, rice cake, and water. Sa ang inuwi ni nanay, binanggit naman po ang sinigang na bangus o milk fish in sour tamarind soup. With this, uh, we can say that indigenized foods such as adobo, shopao, and pancit are depicted in the stories. Yung mga generic items such as eggs, sandwich, candy, vegetables, and fish are also mentioned. Additionally po, dishes like adobo and sinigang together with the native desserts yung mga kakanin po natin are said to be universal in all the regions of the country eaten on a daily basis and are made with ingredients that naturally occur in the environment. Ano pa po yung mga nakita ko sa mga librong ito? Okay, I wanted to share with you uh, more of the things that I've observed. So, the first one is that the narratives of the stories show situations of production. Yan po yung pagtatanim ng mismong mga gulay, ng pagkain, at pag-aalaga ng hayop. Then, you have the distribution. 
One example would be a day in the market, yung pagpunta po sa palengke. And then we have consumption, yung mismong pagkain na po natin sa mesa. With more focus po on the latter, dun sa pagkain mismo. Natin together. Additionally, food is seen as a source of family's income. Makikita niyo po dito yung cover ng taho, 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 tahoe, which shows that, uh, yun po, maaari po maging source ng income ang pagkain. Next, we have this uh, particular observation that certain stories presented common Filipino practices such as pasalubong, yung pagdadala, okay, ng pagkain after work or after going to a far away place. Yan po yung sa hating kapatid. And then we have the pabalot, yung bringing of food home from a friend's or a relative's house after a visit. Makikita rin po natin yan sa hating kapatid. Next, we have here, food can be considered to be a uniting element, a converging point of family members, whereas characters may be seen preparing and eating together. So you can see here, uh, an illustration. This is from Cora Cook's Pansit. Next, we have animals in the story as well. So, several picture books feature anthropomorphic animals having food-related behavior. As you can see here, the illustration of uh, Tight Times. Ayan po. Na, kung maaalala po natin yung saying na mas mahirap ka pa sa daga. Diba? So, parang, ano siya, napaka-akma po ng ginamit ng mga characters sa story. It's a financially difficult time and then you have rats to portray. Uh, to portray the characters, the main characters. So, they're animals acting like humans. Next is, food used as part of figurative language to describe a character. Wanted to share with you this book. Philemon Mamon, ayan, papaano na-enrich yung character, yung image ng character. Mababasa natin dito na hinalin tulad siya sa pagkain. Umalog-alog na naman ang tiyan niyang bilog habang naglalakad at pumabati ng Merry Christmas. Sabi ng mga nanay at yaya, naku, parang keso de bola. Ayan. At nandito pa yung isa. Mahal siya ng kanyang nanay at tatay. At mahal din siya ng kanyang mga kaeskwela. Kapag nadikit ang mga ito sa kanya, parang mamon. Nakapanggigigil kagatin. Ayan. So, yun po yung ilang excerpts sa Philemon Mamon ni Christine Belen at ni Jason Moss. Yan po. So, mas na-engage yung karakter ng story sa pamamagitan ng paghahaling tulad sa pagkain. Next, we have here mealtime concepts. Ang mealtime concepts po dito yung agahan, tanghalihan, Hapunan. So, Filipino mealtime concepts can be found in children's picture books as well with a major emphasis on snack time over the standard mealtime. So, madalas pong nababanggit yung merienda. Okay. Next, we have good values. Also, from Maya's birthday party po yung uh, example dito. It promotes uh, good values together with food. Okay. Which can be seen in picture books. Ito po, pinapakita yung pagmamahal ng adoptive parents kay Maya. Sumunod naman po ay changes. Changes in the characteristics of the food taken may indicate a change in the character's condition. Ito yung mismo libro. Ayan. Halo-halo espesyal. Okay. Halo-halo espesyal ni Yvette Fernandez at Jill Arwen Posadas. Papakita ko lang yung mismo mga pinresent na pagkain. Ayan. 
Ayan, malaki yung libro natin ngayon. Okay, we have here Bibingka, Champorado, Ensaimada, and then Turol. Tapos, nung biyernes na, so araw-araw siya, nung biyernes na, ang kinain niya na ay halo-halo. Okay, halo-halo na yung kinain niya. Kasi nga, kung mapapansin nyo, isang linggo nga may sakit si Jackie. Siyempre, kapag may sakit ka, hindi ka naman kakain ng malamig. Basta-basta, di ba? So, nung dulo, kumain na siya ng halo-halo. Okay, halo-halo ni Lola Itang. Okay? At doon, siya ay gumaling na. Okay? Magandang balita, Jackie. Magaling ka na, sabi ni Mama. Mabisa ang gamot. Tumingin kami ni Lola Itang sa isa't isa at humiti. Alam namin hindi lamang ang gamot ang mabisa. Okay? So, ayan ang halo-halo espesyal. Ayan. Next po, we have symbolism. Symbolisms of love, aging, and rite of passage can be found in picture books which involve food. So, you can see here an illustration of Cora Cook's pansit. Pinasuot siya ng apron which is like a rite of passage from being a very young child to being able to do uh, some kind of adult things already in the kitchen. Uh, yung mga gawain na pang matanda sa kusina. Okay, so it's also interesting uh, responsibility to the child. The presence of food in the studied children's picture books uh, promote Filipino culture by adding Pinoy texture to the stories. I would like to recommend that uh, the next big step to take would be a more extensive inquiry which will involve more children's books with food descriptions to further gain more, no? gain more understanding and knowledge of how food is used in Philippine children's picture books, both in print and digital format. At ito nga po pala, by the way, mga bata po, after the storytelling session of Halo Halo Especial, they are eating ensaymada. Okay. Ensaymada kasi, uh, kumain yung character ng ensaymada dun sa kwento. Lastly, one learns a great deal about culture through food and stories. There is no denying that Filipino children are introduced to the local culture at an early age. One of the best ways of doing it is giving them a taste, a tikim, of what is in store for them in life by exploring those wonderful stories involving food which are intended for the young and young at hearts. Maraming maraming salamat po for having me here, telling you more about food and children's books. Thank you so much, Ma'am Rochelle. Sigurado ako maraming natutunan ng ating mga manunood. If you have any questions for our speaker, you can go to menti.com and key in the code 84118811. Again, for those of you who just joined us, this is Ka Intayo, Exploring Filipino Culture and Food Representations in Local Children's Picture Books, organized by the UP School of Library and Information Studies. For questions, again, you may post it by going to menti.com and typing in the code 84118811. Please check the previously posted questions and upvote questions you would like to be prioritized. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and like our Facebook page. UPSLIS, where this video is currently being streamed. That's UPSLIS on YouTube and Facebook. While we are waiting for questions, I would like to announce that the Philippine Journal of Librarianship and Information Studies, PHJLIS, is currently accepting submissions for 2020. The PHJLIS publishes articles discussing issues and developments from all fields in the area of library and information science. For more information about PHJLIS, please visit phjlis.org or send an email to editor at phjlis.org. Aside from the PHJLIS, we also have another important announcement. After almost a decade of research, gathering of photos from the archives and our alumni, 
looking and invite looking for and inviting sponsors for this book book project and numerous layout revisions the first slis coffee table book in more than 50 years of the school's existence is finally out you can place your order now at bit.ly slash sliscpb there are limited copies available so orders will be processed on a first come first served basis until stocks run out we also want to know your best, funniest, weirdest, oddest, scariest, sappiest memories in SLIS through a project called Hashtag I Remember. So if you have something that you want to share, please go to upslis.info slash I Remember. The UPSLIS is also accepting donations for the construction and renovation of the new SLIS building. For any donations, you may coordinate by sending an email to admin at slis.upd.edu.ph. And finally, to ensure that every BLIS student is equipped with the required equipment or gadget for remote learning, the UPLSAA is introducing the Kaagapay Project for UPBLIS students in support to the program of the UP system Kaagapay sa pag-aaral ng mga scholar ng bayan. You may donate in cash or in kind to help our BLIS students who may be struggling with remote learning. You may send your inquiries to uplsaa.inc at gmail.com. At this juncture, I believe we have questions from our audience. So now let's address the questions posted on menti.com. So our first question is, are you worried that the foods mentioned in the storybooks have high sugar content, reinforcing the addiction to sweets and creating a generation of obese and diabetic children? Hmm, a uh, very interesting question. Para sa akin, uh, yung mga karamihan naman po ng mga storybooks na nabanggit ay nagpo-promote po ng healthy eating habits. So, I believe they are also guided by their uh, teachers, parents, and librarians, library professionals on uh, how to moderate food. Okay. Kung paano po, syempre, hindi din may iwasan na uh, ma, ma, ano, mahilig sa matamis, pero alagi nga pong in moderation. So, yun po. Kung mapapansin nyo po sa ilan, yung sa Philemon Mamon, saka yung sa uh, yung isa pa po na picky eater yung isang uh, character, eventually in the end, uh, they try to uh, gain, uh, gain some healthy eating habits. Yeah. So, para sa akin, um, yung mga libro pong ito ay malaking bagay na may promote din po yung healthy eating habits. Hindi ako masyadong worried in a sense na yun ang pinopromote ng mismo mga libro. Opo. Okay. Thank you, Ma'am Rochelle. Another question related to that previous question. How about eating behavior, ma'am? Like lamon or kain? Are there any patterns or trends? Lam yung salita pong lamon, parang hindi masyadong, ano, masyadong nagamit po sa libro. Although yung parang hilig, yung malakas kumain, hindi natin yung sa, I have this book, yung um, libro na Philemon Mamon, dito, may kalakasan siyang kumain. Pero, in the end, yun nga, na there's that realization na, uy, uh, I really need to watch uh, what I eat and uh, exercise as well para mabalanse yung uh, pagkain, pati na rin yung uh, health natin. Ito, uh, let me see. Kung gumamit ba ng salitang lamon, not really, not really, not much if I'm not mistaken sa mga pages na nakikita ko po. Ayan, yun po. At ito po, makikita natin na nagkaroon ng pagbisita sa doktor. Ayan, mainam po na, of course, may guidance din ng mga medical professionals yung ating uh, pag, uh, pagkakaroon ng healthy eating habits. Maliban po sa general na pinapromote po sa atin. Thank you, Ma'am Rochelle. And we have another question. Illustration question po. How about the way that the food are drawn? Do you think they're accurate enough or are they too stylized? 
Kasi yung mga illustrators, I believe they have their own own styles regarding the food. So some uh imagery talaga very ano, very colorful and yummy, okay? So na I believe on my in my end, yung perception ko sa kanya, nakukuha naman nila yung uh pinaka goal of attracting the attracting the reader's uh, attention as well as balancing it out with the text. So, palagi ko, halimbawa, ito. Maganda yung pagkaka-illustrate uh, po ni Jason Moss. And then, the other one, I believe I have this big book. <laughs> ang laki ng libro natin. Ayan. Ayan. So, ang ganda rin ang illustrations dito sa Halo-Halo Special. So, Um, very colorful and eye-catching. At yun nga po, napopromote din ang Filipino culture kasi karamihan nung pagka na nakikita po dun sa labindalawang libro would uh, promote uh, Filipino food na malapit po sa puso ng mga bata. So, in a sense pala, no, na-realize ko, no, na we, library professionals, can also be uh, promoters po ng culture, Filipino culture, through children's books and food. Okay. Thank you, Ma'am Rochelle. Another question. Um, hindi ko po sure kung na-miss ko sa talk. Narinig ko po yung part na may pasalubong, etc. How about sharing? Madalas po ba lumabas yung theme na iyon? Sharing. Kasi yung sharing yung pong hating kapatid. Yeah, it uh, focuses more on sharing the food with uh, the sibling. So, pinakita rin po yung konsepto ng sharing. Tapos, yun sa mesa, di ba? We tend to share the food with our relatives, our family members. So, nandun din po siya. Although, hindi siya, kumbaga, napapakita ng direkta. Maliban po dun sa uh, konsepto po ng hating kapatid din. Ayan. So, may mga, ano po, may mga... Practices, Pinoy practices, practices na makikita po tayo na hindi masyadong ha-highlight. Kumbaga, for example, yung sa hati kapatid, hindi po highlighted masyado yung pabalo at pabaan. More on, yung pagkakaroon ng equal na uh, paghahati o pag-share ng pagkain ng focus. May mga ganun po. Kumbaga, may mga sub-Pinoy practices na pinapakita yung mga, uh, mga libro. Yun po. Okay, so nagre-reflect dun sa mga children's books yes. yung ating mga ano no mga oh, may na nagutom uh, ka ba? Ako yung nagugutom. <laughs> Medyo nakakagutom nga po yung ano oh, po. yung inyong uh, lecture, ma'am. Nakakagutom sa merienda po ngayon. <laughs> Sige po. Okay, um another question. Ito, ma'am. Uh, kung ayaw po kumain ng gulay ng anak ko, ano po ang masasuggest ninyo na book? <laughs> Gulay. Ayun po, yung nabanggit po kanina. <laughs> Nutritionist din tayo, te. Ma'am. <laughs> okay. Kasi ano eh, para sa akin, no, bilang magulang din po, ano, um, nagsisimula rin po din sa atin as parents na dapat nakikita nila tayong kumakain. Minsan kung wala na rin silang choice kung ano yung nasa mesa. Talagang mapabakain din po sila. Siguro gradually, eventually through time, talagang maiinganyo po natin sila. So other than that, yung umbaga, demonstration modeling na, hoy, uh, ito anak, kumakain ako, mainam to sa katawan. Uh, maari po doon sa labing dalawa po na nabanggit natin ay yun pong... Gusto ko ng pansit ngayon. Pwede po yun. Kasi doon pinakita na yung bata po ay ayaw talagang kumain ng uh, no, healthy food. Tapos, kung baka, kung gusto mo pansit, pansit lang. Yung craving niya, yun lang. Parang ganun ang dating. So, eventually, in the end, napakain din siya ng mainam na pagkain for uh, for the kids' health. Tsaka yung pong Philemon Mamon, yun nga, Makikita natin sa Philemon Mamol na it's a family thing, okay? Na hindi lang yung bagets ang uh, dapat mag, ano, kumbaga, mag-change ng lifestyle, okay? Makikita po natin doon na si nanay at si tatay din ay sumabay, sinabayan si uh, si Philemon. So, ang ganda nung, ano, nung uh, konsepto na yon na 
a family, di ba? A family that eats together, exercises to exercises together. Parang ganun na natin. Okay, sige po. Yan. Thank you, ma'am. Um, ito, to really, uh, another question, ano, pero may follow-up siya. Uh, okay. Thesis related. Ito po. If may isa pa pong aspect about food and children's literature na gusto ninyong i-explore, ano po iyon at bakit? Smiley face. Quite interested po ako mag ng thesis about this, if possible. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yun nga po yung nabanggit ko. Hindi ko in-include dito yung mga wordless books. That's one. Uh, the other one would be yung mga libro na merong... Uh, animated po yung mismong pagkain. Kasi nakakita tayo dito kanina ng anthropomorphism, yung animals po, yung focus, no? So yung animals ay may human-like behavior. Tapos yung behavior nila towards food. Pero ang hindi ko in-include ay yung mga mismong pagkain na merong human-like behavior. Di ba? So animated yung food. So that's another line of study that I'm also interested in. Marami, marami. Actually, before this, uh, when back in college, I made I made a paper on uh, Rizal, El Fili, and Noli, Mitanghere. Um, I rounded up all, hindi not all, if not all, most of the food in uh, Rizal's uh, books. Tapos, I also gathered the recipes. That's for the Rizal subject. So, ever since college pa, talagang nahihilig akong mag-research patungkol dito. So, yun. Uh, maliban po sa children's books, pwede rin yung pang young adult. Uh, young adult books, pwede rin pong pagting- uh, pagtuunan ng pansin. Ayan. Yun yung ilan. So, pwede rin, uh, ang focus po ay pagkain, kultura, at yun po, history. Okay. Pagkain, kultura, at history. Ayan. Tapos, make sure na yung thesis advisor. <laughs> <laughs> may may meron siya laging minunguya sa gilid kasi nakakagutom yung thesis na yan. Ah uh, okay. Kung taga UPSLIS yung nagtanong na yon ma'am baka ano na kukontakin ka na niya. <laughs> okay, another question. Um ano po method ano pong methodology ang ginamit ninyo to come up with the data for the talk? Content analysis po. Tama po, content analysis po. As I've mentioned a while ago, uh, content analysis. Analysis tsaka I made several several rounds of reading nung labindalawang libro na yon. Okay. Tapos at the same time, I also looked at the elements of literature. Now, if you'll be having access, I'm not quite sure no, if it's still uploaded uh, in the site ng IBBY. Um, andun yung mismong paper itself. So, ito pong naging discussion po natin ngayon. Kung baga, kung meron tayong isang buong cake, isang slice lang siya nung, nung cake, nung paper. So, pagdabasa niyo po doon, mas hinimay ko po doon yung mga uh, detalye doon sa elements, sa plot, sa character, uh, sa setting, yan. Makikita niyo po doon yung... Uh, yung mismong hibla nung, nung ano, nung mismong paper. At hopefully, ma-enjoy nyo siya. Kasi ako na-enjoy ko siya. Okay, ma'am. Yan, since nabanggit nyo po, no, kung paano ninyo in-examine yung mga titles na nabanggit ninyo kanina dun sa inyong lecture. Um, another question related to that po, from our viewers, um, hindi ba masyadong maliit ang sample size ng books to claim those common themes? Again po, ma'am? Okay. Uh, hindi ba masyadong maliit ang sample size ng books to claim those common themes? Sample size, yes po. As I mentioned, yung recommendation po natin for this particular paper, uh, mas mainam po na magkaroon eventually ng mas marami pa. Okay? Mas marami pang pag-aaral tungkol dito na kung saan masasakop pa po yung uh, iba pa pong mga libro. Lalo na ngayon na napakarami pa pong lumabas na panibagong materials. Opo. So, ito po, kung ano po yung may access ako, I tried my best to to access the materials through digital and uh, hard copies. And I also uh, I also tried to communicate with school librarians and um, several libraries 
so that I could come up with, I can come up with that 12 books po. So, ngayon, 2020, maraming bagong labas na libro at super yummy. Data is out there. Just grab it and do some research. Sobrang sarap niyang gawa ng studies. Tapos, lagi rin po akong laman ng home economics library while I was uh, writing that particular paper. So, mapapabisita rin po kayo doon. Kasi talaga mag, yan, mag-aalign siyang dalawa. Children's books, tsaka yung uh, lib- mga libro na sinulat po ng ating mga uh, food writers. Okay. Sige. Doon sa mga nabanggit nyo kanina, ma'am, no? marami mga bagong labas na libro. Uh, children's Books Discussing Food ngayong 2020. So, doon sa mga nanonood na interesadong gumawa ng research na similar to what Ma'am Rochelle did. Ayan. So, meron na kayong uh, pwedeng pagsimulan yung mga bagong labas na titles this year. Yes. Okay. Sige po. Thank you, ma'am. And eto, medyo... Uh, unrelated sa topic, pero since na-mention kasi natin kanina, ma'am, yung tungkol dun sa inyong vlog, or sorry, sa inyong vlog na One Valenzuela, meron tayong question dito. Top three places to visit in Valenzuela. Wow. Top three places. We have like a lot of barangays, 30 plus. For me, siguro yung dikit-dikit would be yung area ng Nagugutom tuloy ako. Talaga. Paramis, pagkatapos ng talk na to, kakain ako. Ayan. Anyway, uh, around the Fatima area, yung university uh, section sa Marulas, doon po, um, marami pong kainan doon. Marulas area, we have there yung mga karaniwan pong pinupuntahan ng mga estudyante. Andun din maraming milk tea houses. At the same time, kung local food, Natutuwa ako kasi kanina yung Valenzuela nung kusinero. Nagpunta sila sa mayor's office. So, I will I, I should be mentioning several restaurants right now. Okay? So, yung pong sa uh, Arca Yard, yung Norte. Okay? Uh, napakagaling nung uh, chef natin doon, si na Chef Louie. And then, we have sa Lingunan po, uh, Barangay Lingunan, uh, yung pong ating... Real Grill, the Real Grill Burger. Ayan po. Siya po ay, kumbaga, nag-originate dito sa Valenzuela City. At siguro isa pang, um, hmm, ang kasi, baka sabihin. We have, uh, <laughs> we have Euphrosina. Ayan, Euphrosina Pizzeria. Ayan, Pizza House po siya, na dito rin, uh, dito rin nagsimula. At meron kaming year-round, ah, na puto bumbong. Okay, year round na puto bongbong. So kung kung naghahanap ka po ng napakasarap na puto bongbong na may libreng siya, ah, meron po kami niyan sa Malinta. So, hindi po mga balikbayan, uh, talagang dinadayo pa sila. Kasi nga, sa kanila, regularly, alam nila na may puto bongbong doon. So kapag umuwi ka ng June, saan ka maghahanap ng puto bongbong? Sa, sa Valenzuela, meron. Ah, by the way, yung pala, by the way, last na lang po. Ang dami kasi okay. kayo. Check nyo lang din yung website, yung vlog site. Yung Tagalag, Tagalag area, Tagalag Fishing Village is uh, kumbaga, currently promoted by the Valenzuela City Government. At meron po dun yung uh, kainan sa palaisdaan ni Tata Selo. I'm a regular there kasi I run. Uh, I run around the barangays at then ang end point ko ay doon. Merong Andy Coffee yung breakfast nila at napakaganda na ambience. Sarap mag-relax after a good run. So if you're biking or if you are running or just wanted to wander around Tagalog Fishing Village, maliban sa pangingisda at magandang scenery, ay may masasarap din pong kainan. Thank you for those suggestions, ma'am. Ayan, I'm sure excited na na matry ng mga viewer natin yan. Punta kayo. <laughs> okay. Um, ito, since kanina pa natin pinag-uusapan ng pagkain, ma'am, meron tayong isang humabol na question dito. Ano okay. po ang favorite food ninyo? Ano hmm. daw po ang favorite food niyo, ma'am? Dami. <laughs> Yung pinaka-favorite. Yun. Pinaka-favorite. Hmm. Um, usually I would eat. Ngayon ko na-realize na dami ko palang hilig na pagkain. Mm-mm. 
So, kung comfort food, uh, syempre, hindi po mawawala dyan sa akin yung chicken curry. Isa yun. Katulad kanina. Kakakain ko lang ng chicken curry. <laughs> Napos, yung adobo. Adobo. Lalo na kapag, ano, um, mainit siya. Tapos, hindi yung masabaw. Part yung talagang, ano naman, yung uh, very, parang halos gravy na yung sabaw, nanonoo, tapos the next day, pwede mo siyang iprito para sa breakfast ninyo. Sarap noon. Tapos pwede mo i-flakes, tapos isabay mo sa garlic rice. Sarap. Ayun. And then, siguro for dessert, uh, dessert, yung simpleng egg pie po. Simpleng egg pie. Yun yung gusto kong kainin, tsaka kape, brewed coffee po. Yun, so far. Yun yung ilan. Pero syempre, depende sa, sa mood. Mm-mm. Mahilig din ako sa gulay. Mahilig din ako sa gulay, basically, uh, chop suey, ganyan. Tsaka yung ginataang kalabasa at sitaw. Ang dami ko hindi. Ang dami pala. Dami. Pero okay lang yan, ma'am. Marami Dabo, din kami mga favorite food. <laughs> Naitatakbo. Kayo, ma'am, ano favorite ninyo, ma'am Wayne? Ang favorite food ko. Uh, diba? Ang hirap mag-isip. Siyempre, diba? O, oh, ma. Ang hirap pala. Ano po? Laing ang favorite food. Wow. May masarap din mag-laing dito, ma'am, every Sunday. Si ma'am Lulu. <laughs> Ay, oh, meron taga, ano, taga, Genti ata, taga Genti. Sarap na ako. Oh, baka Lutu, pwede. Lutu, purang pon. Masubukan nga yan, ma'am. Apo. Sige po. Patalit ko kayo. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Mr. Speedy na lang or lalamog po tayo. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Ayan. Um, ayan. One last question. Medyo light na lang to. Uh, ah, for our last question. Curious po ako sa piglet sa likod. May rason po ba? Bakit nandyan siya? Ayan. So, may naka-display na piglet sa background ni Ma'am Rocha. Ayan. ayan. Favorite cartoon character ko siya. Favorite ko siya na character sa sa libro, uh, nabili ko siya sa Japan dati uh, nung bumisita kami doon. At ayun, uh, uh, it reminds me of good things. Lalo na kapag medyo toxic, pagod, ganyan. Pag tinignan mo siya, parang you should be reminded that you should be happy. Happy lagi. Ayan. We need a pro and friends. Pampa good vibes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sige po. Thank you very much, Ma'am Rochelle, for answering our viewers' questions. We wish you success in all of your teaching and other career endeavors. At this point po, we will now award the Certificate of Appreciation to our speaker. The certificate reads... UP School of Library and Information Studies presents the Certificate of Appreciation to Rochelle S. Silverio for delivering her valuable webinar entitled Kain Tayo, Exploring Filipino Culture and Food Representations in Local Children's Picture Books. As part of the 2020 UP School of Library and Information Studies Lecture Series in celebration of its 59th anniversary, given the second day of December at the University of the Philippines, Diliman, Quezon City. Signed, uh, Professor Rea Ruena Apolinario, College Secretary, and Professor Mary Grace P. Golfo, Barcelona, Dean. Ito na po ang certificate niyo, ma'am. Thank you so much. Salamat po ng marami. Thank you very much for having me this afternoon. And I'm really happy to uh, share to you what I am really passionate about. So I'm hoping na ano, natutunan po kayo at the same time, hindi kayo masyadong nagutom sa pinag-usapan po natin ngayong afternoon. Yan po. Thank you very much po and keep on reading and keep on eating. Maraming salamat, ma'am. So thank you so much to our speaker, to all our viewers. Thank you so much for joining us. And I hope you all had meaningful takeaways from this webinar. Thank you too to our SLIS faculty for making this event possible.
special shout out to Professor Nathan Isip and Professor Mark Santos for handling the tech side of this event and to Professor Johan Frederick Kabab and Mr. Judge Paul Reyes for their work on the graphics and publicity materials. Please don't forget to register using the link to be shown on screen to receive your certificates. If you missed portions of this webinar, you may rewatch it as a Facebook video or check our YouTube channel at UPSLIS. For updates on our upcoming activities, please follow us at our official Facebook page, UPSLIS, our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash UPSLIS, or visit our website, slis.upd.edu.ph. That wraps up our December webinar. Please join us for another installment of our Webinar Wednesday series in our next feature. Our next feature is called Wag Kang Papahuli, Data Privacy versus Freedom of Information with our law librarianship expert, Attorney Rolly Pioro. This is happening on January 6, 2021 at 2 p.m. Philippine Standard Time. Once again, this is Ina Thurdy Santos, your host and moderator, wishing you all the best. See you on our next webinar. Bye-bye.